YouTube. This is CFL Fanatic. Once again, my panelists, Ryan and Ben. Uh, we're actually just watching the 2005 breakup. Uh, Edmonton beat Montreal 38-35 to in that game in overtime. Only the second Grey Cup in history in overtime. And wouldn't it be interesting if uh, if this Sunday was an overtime game? That would be very interesting. That would be pretty, fun to pretty, watch. pretty cool. But it doesn't happen all that often, so yep. don't get your hopes up. All right, so we're going to be talking a little bit about special teams today um, and, and the kick game and the return games. So why don't we start with place kicking because um, especially if you can't put the ball in the end zone on every drive, so you're going to need um, three points to yep. come away with some points. And they can add up. And in, in a game that I think will be close, it could be very important. So we'll talk about Damon Duval on the side of the ball for Montreal. Uh, his kick percentage is 87.3% of his field goals made. His longest is from 53 yards. Yep. Uh, you know, not much to be said. Great first in the league. Um, but, you know, I don't think Montreal's going to have to use him a lot in the game because, well, they're a great team. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Ben, Ben, how do you feel about Ryan's statement there? That was, uh, that hurt. Because <laughs> it's true? Let's go on. Okay, why don't, why don't we look at Luka Kanji then? Um, okay. His percentage isn't quite as high. Uh, he's 76.7%. Um, I actually don't have his longest uh, kick in front of me right now, but um, I don't think it's over 50. So, definitely behind Damon Duval, but do you think that he could... Uh, he could be an asset to Saskatchewan. He could definitely become very repetitive in this game if Saskatchewan can't get into the end zone. Yeah. He, he'll become very important. But I, I think I think it's important to state that they probably don't want Luka Kanji on the field all that much because no. I don't think Montreal has too much problem finishing their drives. So they're going to need to put that ball in the end zone yep. if they, yes. they want to get anywhere. Okay. Um, so, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about the return game then, because this is going to be big, obviously, yep. as well. Yeah, huge. So, we'll start with Montreal. Um, Larry Taylor, uh, he's had another pretty good season. Um, on kickoff returns, he's averaging 20.8 yards a return, and on punts, he's averaging 8.9 yards per I don't know return. if he's the best in the league, but he's certainly a star in my books, and uh, I think Saskatchewan's going to be over their heads with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, th their kicking game uh, with the loss of Jamie Borum, who usually handles kickoffs, suffered a big blow a couple weeks ago. Um, yes. So they don't have him. So um, their kickoff team has only been working together for a little while, whereas Montreal has had theirs together for the whole season. Yep. So that could be interesting. Okay, so we'll talk about Saskatchewan's return game. And against Demon Duval, you do have to have a good return game. And luckily, they have found a good returner in Jason Armstead. Um, on kickoffs, he's averaging 24.4 yards per return. And on punts, he's averaging 9.2 yards per return. So definitely better. Definitely. He has better stats there than Larry Taylor does. Yep. Okay. You look back to the, to, uh, the last week's game against Calgary. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the gate in, in uh, the third quarter, mm -hmm. big play got them all the way down to the 30-yard line, mm -hmm. and Saskatchewan scored mm -hmm. after that, Yeah. So, which makes him the best in my book. Right, so he's, he's obviously an important returner. Um, it's interesting to point out, though, that they also use Jason Armstead on offense, and a couple times yes. this year they've actually used that trick play where they give it to him, and then he throws the ball down the field. They've tried that twice. Yes. One of them against Winnipeg ended in a touchdown, so... Yeah. Uh, I think it would be very, very interesting if um, they were to score a touchdown on Montreal in the Grey Cup. With well, that, that's certainly a nice play. With that play, I don't yes. think Montreal will fall for it. So obviously on touchdowns, because um, return touchdowns are obviously uh, put you give you tons of momentum when you get them. Larry Taylor does not actually have any kickoff return touchdowns, but he does have two punt return touchdowns. So um, yeah, oh yeah, if. If he gets the ball, Saskatchewan, they're going to really, really have to watch him the entire game. Mm -hmm. Where he's mm -hmm. yeah. so going to break him apart. Right. And Jason Armstead, obviously, like we mentioned before, has better stats. But he also has no kickoff return touchdowns and no punt return touchdowns. So 
do you think that might um, might affect the game a little bit, Ben? If Montreal's uh, defense on special teams doesn't do very well, he's going to be running it back, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's all about um, not leaving a hole for him to yes. for him to get open. Um, obviously, uh, let's briefly touch on the head coaches. Um, we'll start with you, Ben. Your thoughts on head coach Ken Miller? Okay. He was really good this year. He first year, and he got them into the Grey Cup. He well, no, no, he's not first year. He's second year. He was their coach last year, so he's not he's not the rookie. But he's new. He's he's, new he's very new. He's new. Yeah. Yes, these coaches both have the same level of experience, two years. Yeah. This is their second year in the CFL. So, yeah, overall, I think uh, Coach Ken Miller has done a pretty good job with this team. Um, you know, the, the coaching has been has been interesting, um, especially, and uh, I look at teams on the bottom of the heap this year, such as Winnipeg, who's had some problems with um, um, Mike Kelly. And, and your favorite team as oh, well. Oh, and don't even get me started on Bart Andrus, who in my books is just about the worst coach to ever enter into football. Yeah. So, uh, way to go, Bart. Way to go. You're really the sun. That hardly needs to be said. So let's talk a bit about Mark Tressman. Uh, do you think he's done a good job with Montreal? Yeah, well, as you said, it's his second year in the CFL, right? Both years, they're in the, in the Grey Cup, right. so... I don't think there's any doubt that he's a great coach. Even and though he Montreal won. lost last year. Well, yes. he still got them there. And yeah. where did Saskatchewan end up? All right, they weren't there. So <laughs> he's a great coach, and I think he'll lead them to victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it should be it should be interesting to take a look at this. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, maybe Mark Trussman needed a year to kind of get, get a handle on the team. Um, and he still managed to get them to, to the Grey Cup. But now... Uh, he's more experienced in the CFL, and you look at where it's uh, it's gotten them. It's gotten them. Uh, it's gotten them really far. Yeah. So I think that's about it for uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, so this has been the end of um, part three of my uh, series um, that's going to be running this weekend. This weekend on the Grey Cup. So uh, tune in in a little bit. I'll be uploading a video for. Uh, video number four and we'll be talking a little bit about um, some some goods and bads in the CFL and we'll also uh, be discussing uh, our picks and uh, I will tell you my pick for the big game on Sunday and once again I will see you on Sunday.